Well, howdy folks, welcome to this episode of Burns Misadventures. Uh, we got a little project today. We're going to be putting a keyboard on this here Dell Inspiron 1501. Uh, this particular one has got an AMD 64 Athlon X2. So that's a dual core processor. I realized that the keyboard was bad, so we can uh, replace that keyboard and uh, see what we can do with it. So let's get this camera turned around and we'll get after it. So this is definitely one of the easier keyboards to replace. First thing you're gonna do, is we're gonna, we're gonna do, I should say, is uh, we're gonna open it up. So I was able to get a keyboard from eBay, I believe. I wanna say I spent $13 or something like that. But at any rate, this is what they sent me. So if we open it up, So this is the keyboard that they sent me, and it's got the ribbon cable, nice. I believe this was a refurb job, but at any rate, if all the keys work, that's all I care about. My price wasn't too bad, so let's set this aside. You definitely want to make sure you got the power off removed and all that fun stuff before you start ripping laptops apart. I've had this apart before so it's not too difficult to do. Certainly don't need a special screwdriver. Just a simple flat blade right here to get this little piece up right here. All right. And once that's up you can start you don't want to break it. So you want to get that nice and flat. And just kind of start twisting as you lift okay and there it is and so you have a couple tabs at this end and like I say it just pops off from the right side as you're facing it at this point it's just a simple matter of removing two screws yes the two screws that you're going to need to remove are here and here all right Okay, and this one, right here, all right, keep those together. Now, it has some uh, snap-in tabs on both sides of the keyboard, and the easiest way to get those loose is simply to lift in the middle of the top of the keyboard here, and get a little flex on it, and they'll come loose. And then, uh, on this other one, same story. Just kind of come up. Okay, now you got three tabs down here at the bottom, or the front of the laptop, towards the mouse pad there. And they're in there, so you pull it up a little bit to get out of there. All right, so now we got our ribbon cable. So we just uh, pull up this little lock, and it'll come right up. All right, so if you look at our old keyboard, right there, and our new keyboard, right here, they do seem to be identical. Awesome. So let's set that old one aside. So the new one has a piece of tape here. We're gonna have to get rid of that tape. And let's see here. Next thing I would do is uh, just lay this down in there. There's a tab on both ends. Get it to lay flat and then just lock it in. And if it doesn't close right away, like it didn't, it's probably because you got something misaligned. And so you just try again to get it right. Okay, there it is. That's the sweet spot right there. And so we we'll just close that and it's ready. Okay, then the next thing. Like I say, you're going to put these tabs in first. So we get those tabs to go in there. There we go. And then I'm just going to hold it up here 
kind of in the middle of the keyboard and I'm gonna push down on both ends of the keyboard to kind of flex it and it's in. Now we just gotta put the screws in. You wanna be careful getting your screws started. You don't wanna drop them down inside there. You may not get them back without complete disassembly and that would suck. Yeah, there's that. Okay. And we'll put the other panel on. It has our power button and some indicator lights. So again, we're going to start the tabs first, down at this end. Get those in. And just basically work your way from left left to right. So kind of snapping it in as you go. That should do it. Looks the part anyway, doesn't it? All right, I got my universal power supply hooked up to it. Let's see if we can make it go. All right, so I've got our laptop turned on here. I had it installed OpenSUSE 15.1 on it, and it's got the GNOME desktop, and it's got Dash to Dock installed. I kept trying different environments because if you run the LSPCI command, which I, I know I'm losing some of you in this, but that's a command that will show have it list all the hardware on the system that it can detect. The wireless card comes up, but making it actually do something is something that has eluded me thus far. Anyway, this is what's on here right now. And um, so if we just go ahead and open the text editor, we can check to see if the keyboard works properly, which it does, but I want to demonstrate it. Uh, so we'll just go text. There we go, text editor. No, oh, that's a simple name, huh? Alrighty. So we'll just kind of click to capture that, and then we'll just run across the keyboard. Tab. Yeah, tab worked. Top works. Caps lock. Turns on the light. And enter. Yeah, that works. We'll turn caps lock back off. And we'll see, we got a lower Z, we got left shift, shift key works. And then we have the right shift, the question mark, so that works. I don't know how we would do that, other than to maybe we're try a control C. So let's see, control C, all right, and enter, and see what control V does for it. Yeah. Control works, function, well, we don't know about that. All right, so uh, anyway, space key works, space bar. And arrows work. So overall, I would call this a successful keyboard replacement. Probably won't be doing any more videos on this particular machine unless I can figure out how to fix that Wi-Fi. But at any rate, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, so we have repaired the Dell Inspiron 1501 with a new keyboard. Hey, if you're not a subscriber yet, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. If you are a subscriber, I'd like to thank you for hanging around. And with that, I'm going to close out this video, so y'all take care.